after we were talking about some principles of teaching with analogies, we now want to show you how you can implement an analogy in your science classroom. So teaching with analogies, what is an analogy doing? An analogy is doing nothing else than comparing features from two worlds. It compares features from the source domain and experience-based source domain with an abstract target domain. So you compare something from everyday life with a science topic. And uh, for example, imagine the analogy of uh, comparing an, an eye with a camera. Comparing the camera is like the eye. So you want to talk about uh, the eye, you want to communicate how an eye works and uh, you're using the camera as a starting point. So comparing different features with each other, this is what an analogy is doing. And you have to be really clear about uh, which kind of features are compared. But before implementing this, this uh, analogy in a science classroom, um, you have to be sure how to implement it. And their colleagues from Australia developed uh, a guide that can really help you to structure your implementation of analogies, the so-called FAR guide, Focus, Action, Reflection. What does this mean? Focus. You are starting to focus before you enter the classroom. So do not use a, a metaphor or an analogy spontaneously, but reflect on them before you're using them. And then you have to be sure about the, the concept, the science concept to be communicated. Uh, is this unfamiliar to your students? Is this difficult? Where it is, is it difficult to understand? And uh, is it abstract? And your second, you have to be sure about your students. Where are your students standing? Uh, what, is their, what are their preconceptions? Where, what do they already know um, about the concept to be taught? And the third is uh, you have to be sure about the, the analogy itself, about the analogon. Uh, because the analog, it needs to be familiar to the students to really be successful for science teaching. We have analyzed a lot of analogies and we wanted to find out why a lot of literature uh, about the use of analogies shows that often it's not successful to teach with uh, metaphors and analogies. And what we have found that in 80% of the cases, in 80% of the cases where teaching with an analogy breaks down, uh, we have analogies that are not familiar to the students. For example, comparing an atom with the solar system. Um, this is a very popular metaphor or a very popular, popular analogy in, in school science, but who has experience with the solar system? Or for example, the analogy of uh, the brain as a computer. Who knows how a computer works? So what you have to do is you have to choose, really have to choose examples that are not only familiar to you as a teacher, but where you know that they are familiar to your students too. Action. So you're in the classroom. You're standing in the classroom and implementing a metaphor or an analogy. So when you're implementing an analogy, you have to be sure to discuss about the likes and the unlikes of the analogy. So you have to communicate where does it work, where can we compare features from the from the analog to the target, and where can't we do this? Where does the anal analogy break down? So for example, the camera is like the eye. There you can compare, compare the, camera, the, the cap of the objective with the eyelids to protect, or you can compare um, the, the idea of uh, that you can focus uh, the camera with uh, how you can focus with the eye, but you can't compare, for example, that, uh, that the camera is taking one picture after the other while your eyes are sending, continuously sending pictures to the brain. So discussing where the analogy works and where does it break down is a very important feature of implementing a metaphor or an analogy into a science classroom. Reflection. So you have finished your, your lesson, you have finished your lecture and uh, the most important thing in, in teaching is uh, that, re that you reflect and on how did it go? Did, have I been successful in science teaching? And uh, there you have to reflect where did the analogy work, was it successful? And you can reflect there 
how to change it next time, how to, how to develop this analogy a bit further. So to give some structure for the implementation of analogies, I would propose that uh, before you enter uh, your lesson, before you entered your lecture, you make some notes about uh, the science concept uh, to find out is it complex, is it unfamiliar, is it abstract. You make some notes about where are your students standing, what are their preconceptions, their relevant pre preconceptions on this field. You make some notes about uh, the analogy itself and uh, this means that you reflect and, and, and really write down where this analogy is is uh, experienceable for your students, is this analogy from their everyday life. And then what you're doing next is uh, that you explicitly write down the likes and the unlikes of the analogy. So uh, comparing uh, the, the camera with the eye means comparing different elements. Or for example, a very popular analogy in biology is uh, uh, comparing the photos, uh, the, the protein biosynthesis with, uh, with building a house. So the master plan is the DNA or the architect's office is the nucleus or uh, copying a master plan, plan is transcription and so on. So really write down where the analogy works and write down where it breaks down so that you are prepared for your lesson and you can implement it very fruitfully.